At this time, I'm going to ask Dr. Little to step down for honors and achievements. We celebrate successes of many kinds during the honors and achievements portion of our board meeting. We recognize the significant achievements of our students and staff, as well as the contributions of and partnerships with our business partners and community organizations. We feature all of tonight's honorees in our proof positive newsletter, which was on the sign in table as you came in the door. Here's a copy. If you did not pick one up when you signed in tonight, please do so on your way out. It's a great keepsake, not only for the honorees, but if you need to share it with your grandmothers or your grandfathers. Audience, you should know that if you try to follow along in the newsletter tonight, you might need to skip back and forth from page to page, as we will not recognize our honorees in the same order as they appear in proof positive. We also ask that you stay until we finish recognizing all of tonight's award recipients, as each award winner deserves our undivided attention. However, to accommodate our youngest honorees and their families, once we finish, we will give you a chance to leave before we resume the rest of the meeting. Honorees, when you hear your names, come and stand by Dr. Little. And now, Dr. Little, are you ready? Well, here we go. Tonight, we proudly recognize six National Merit Scholarship semifinalists. Students, please come forward as I call your name. From Lexington High, we have Jackson Goldsmith. We have Lindsay Larrick, Emma Powers, and I think she might be related to a board member up here, Jonathan Trowbridge, and then from River Bluff, we have Caitlin Atkinson, and we have Reagan Green, who I think by, might be related to a board member. Semi-finalists represent the top 1% of U.S. high school seniors. I want to say that number again. These are in our top 1% in our nation. The National Merit Organization chooses students with outstanding academic records, exemplary character references, a written, SAT, written essay, and high SAT scores. These academically talented high school seniors continue to compete for one of 7,600 National Merit Scholarships worth more than $31 million. They have a good chance of attaining finalists standing in February and winning a National Merit Scholarship. Let's congratulate these young men and women. Yeah. I think they're, yeah, we are. Yeah. While they're doing that, let's wish them the best of luck because we want them to come back and tell us that they're now National Merit Scholarship winners, not semi-merit. So let's wish them luck. Thank you. Good luck, y'all. Okay, this is so exciting. Would Lake Murray Elementary Principal Jennifer Stanley and assistant principals, assistant principals Jason Black and Lisa Clamp come forward, please. Student and staff gathered last month to hear the surprise announcement that Lake Murray Elementary on, in Lexington won, won the National Blue Ribbon School status. This does not come as a surprise to us because we have watched the school's tremendous academic growth over the years. The U.S. Department of Education recognized Lake Murray Elementary as an exemplary high-performing school because it is among South Carolina's highest performing schools as measured by state ass assessments or nationally normed tests. After opening in 1999, the school's 107 employees now serve about 858 students in grades pre-K through grade five. <coughs> Excuse me. The staff believes that they are there to impact positively the children who grace their halls each day. Having their best interest in mind permeates every decision made, every thoughtful word spoken, and every relationship formed. A Palmetto Gold and Silver Award winner and a past leader in me school, Lighthouse School, Lake Murray Elementary wants every child to have a mentor, mentor and actively seek support from community members parents and the neighboring high school to, to provide their students with another caring adult to help them navigate their lives confidently. We are so proud of Lake Murray Elementary. <laughs> <laughs> to 
Congratulations. To you. That was a fun day, and we appreciate y'all sharing that with the board. It was a fun, fun day. Have, have you might hear oh, Jennifer. No, no, it's a, I have well, no, we want it for the uh, so it'll be okay. on the tape. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, you gotta, okay. We just want it on the tape. I just want to let everyone know that this award started way before I started at Lake Murray Elementary School. And so I'd like for Devonna Price to please come up and join Aww. me because it is her leadership that started this journey. That was fun. <clears throat> Pleasant Hill Elementary's Laura Coakley will use a Dollar General Literacy Foundation Youth Literacy Grant to support her entire school in their quest to improve literacy. With the $4,000 she received in funding, Pleasant Hill Elementary can purchase a new benchmark assessment tool. The Response to Intervention team believes this will allow teachers to determine students' strengths and weaknesses as well as match students with the correct text. With a deeper knowledge about their students' reading progress, they can form groups for guided reading, tailor their instruction to meet student needs, and track their growth through formative assessments. Congratulations, Ms. Coakley. We're now going to travel to Pillion Middle, where Ashley Owens will bring a school of guests to her agriculture class in December after winning a South Carolina Department of Natural Resources Trout in the Classroom grant. The grant provides approximately 100 trout eggs, an aquarium, and other supplies. These provide students with a one-of-a-kind science project. Students will raise the trout from eggs to fingerlings before releasing them into the local ecosystem. Along the way, they learn responsibility through daily care and maintenance of the aquarium, as well as observation skills as they record physical changes in the fish and water quality. Thank you, Ms. Owens, for seeking out this unforgettable science experience for your students. We're going to have to keep it secret where they let those out so that there won't be any fishermen going after them. Yeah, I, I got a pond <laughs> waiting on them. <laughs> Uh-oh, Tim, Tim's on it. We conclude this evening with grants awarded by the Lexington District 1 Educational Foundation. Executive Director Julie Wash Washburn will recognize grant winners of the Innovation Grants for Elementary Schools as well as funds to support literacy and robotics. I'll turn it over to Ms. Washburn. your time this evening. Um, I'm excited to be with you and I'm actually presenting on um, three different grants tonight so lots to celebrate for the foundation. Um, the first one though is our robotics grants. Um, last year the foundation started investing in these teams and offered <coughs> seed money to the schools. Um, we have two grant winners this year. Um, uh, we've awarded a total this past two years over 25,000 but this year we've invested 7,600 in two new school robotic teams. So I'd love for um, the schools to come up and their team leaders as I recognize them. Um, Beachwood Middle School is led by Lois Byers. So they have a brand new team at Beachwood Naturally. And then Gilbert High School's robotics team is led by Dana Sox. So we want to congratulate them for um, submitting some wonderful grants and giving amazing opportunities to our students. The 
next category is innovation grants. We have, I can walk and talk. <laughs> um, but um, innovation grants, it, we've been doing this for a number of years. We're excited to be able to give some awards this year. We have 15,000 um, to give away and three elementary schools we want to recognize. And these were um, proposals that were made to the foundation. We requested not only a grant proposal, but they had to come and pre give a presentation to our allocations committee, and then the full board voted on it. Um, but they also have to provide a 10% match so the school is investing money in it as well. Um, but it benefits, these three grants this year benefit more than 2,200 elementary school students. So it'll have a huge impact on the schools and the children in those schools. So I would um, like for the award winners, as I recognize you, to please join me at the front. Um, first, we're gonna start with Lexington Elementary and Principal Jim Hamby. Um, LES was given a $5,000 grant titled Let Their Voices Be Heard. Um, let their voices be heard and he will purchase 25 cue balls um, which are really cool devices that he brought to the allocations committee meeting um, they're round they have a microphone in them but they allow the students um, to interact and engage in whatever they're learning about and the board um, had a really good time uh, um, playing with them as mr. Hamby was <laughs> giving the presentation but it increases student engagement um, and I think will be a cool asset to the teachers who have those in the classrooms. Um, our next award goes to Oak Grove Elementary School if Principal Christy Graham and then teacher Deborah Harmon will join us. And their grant was called Idea Lab. And they're creating an area where the students will explore, build, create, and tinker. And they're going to develop critical thinking skills in their students and problem solving skills in their students. So it's a neat area and all the students will rotate through this area at Oak Grove. So really cool project that we're funding. And then our final award winner is Pleasant Hill Elementary. I'm going to ask Principal Margaret Mitchum to join us as well as teachers Betsy Goodman, Jennifer Jones and Emily Stick Stinkney. Um, and they were awarded a $5,000 grant titled Powerful, Purposeful, and Positive Play. I think it was titled just to trip me up as I'm saying it. <laughs> but it's going to transform the kindergarten play area into a space for creative thinking and exploration. And it highlights tinker tables, gardening, and art areas and building areas. So it will be a really neat um, exploration area for the students and other um, grades to use as well. So congratulations to all these award winners. And Julie, while you're taking the picture, I have the privilege of serving on this committee. And I tell you what, we are so blessed to have these teachers and these principals who are so committed to our students because these ideas are just so exciting. And in fact, we all said we wish either we were younger or we all had children that we could put back through these programs to enjoy this because it's so creative. You guys did Never a great job. Late. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a grandchild. <laughs> Congratulations. My final award for the evening, and this is the fun part of my job is giving away the money um, that we work so hard to raise. Um, this award is made possible. Um, we just finished our LEAP annual campaign, and for those who don't know what that is, it's the Lexington Emergency Education Assistance Plan. It is solely funded by the employees in Lexington County School District 1, and we are so um, you know, thankful for everyone who donated, but the grant that I'm about to award comes from the LEAP Education Funds. Um, those funds are invested by the board members. We definitely seek Dr. Little, Dr. Talley, other leaders in the district um, and guiding us in those areas, but um, the Bucks for Books grant, um, the, this is the third year of our award. Our board members actually learned about a state mandate, um, Read to Succeed, and found out that the state said you have to have X number of books at each grade level in order for our students to become successful readers. However, the state did not provide any money in that aspect, so the foundation board leaders said, hey, 
We want to step up and we want to help. The last two years, we awarded money for elementary schools. Um, and this year, we're kind of switching our focus and helping middle school literacy efforts. But I would like to ask Dr. Gloria Talley to come join me, as well as Dr. Erica Bissell, so we can formally recognize them. Um, the foundation is giving a $20,000 grant to be divided among each of the eight, elementary, or eight middle schools this year for literacy efforts. has been invested in literacy over the um, last three years. So I think this is a very important thing. Always have a need for funding in that area, but our board leaders, some of which are on our board of trustees, I think feel very strongly about that. So we appreciate their continued leadership and investment. Thank you. And before we conclude, I think Ms. Green wanted to say one thing. Just a little point of privilege. Today is also Reagan's birthday, so. <laughs> Happy, um, and she's spending it with us. She's spend, Well, she's getting ready to leave. I'm spending it with you, so. Um, Happy birthday, Reagan. So in conclusion, thank you for taking the time to help us recognize the many honors and achievements of our students and staff and the many generous contributions of our local businesses and community. We love sharing our good news with all of you. Honorees, when you leave the meeting, remember to head to your left and into the lobby where a member of the communications office will help you find your certificate. Now, just as I promised, you are welcome to stay for the remainder of our board meeting. However, you are also free to leave if you want to step out quietly. Thank you.